Previously on BMW, we covered Chinese dragon mythology and the boss design of Red Whisker. In this episode, let's talk about Black Long and their lore in Journey to the West. Watching Black Long's boss fight, you might find it extremely musical. The mace looks like some kind of modified Chinese drum on a stick. He charges it with lightning and smashes the ground like drum beats. Also, in the middle of the fight, there is a male voice singing in the background. Because of his accent and the unique rhythm, immediately we could recognize him being the headless monk from 2021 UE5 gameplay and 2023 Gamescom opening night. This form of performing is called Shanbei Shuo Shu, an intangible cultural heritage performed by Xiong Zhu Ying. I found this clip when he was on national television and let's take a listen. And here is the clip from the Gamescom trailer. Comparing them together, we can recognize a similar rhythm between the two tracks. What he speaks is a regional dialect that has different pronunciations from the common tone Mandarin. His technique and way of singing originated from the northern regions of Shanxi province. The Famen Temple and its pagoda we covered in the last episode are also from this province. Due to the musical nature of the fight, we can say with confidence that the folklore reference of him is the dragon's firstborn, Qiu Niu, who loves music and is the most good-tempered among the dragon sons. Do check out previous episode for more folklore explanations. Typically, we can find representations of Qiu Niu on the tip of Hu Qin, a collective name for string instruments used by ethnic minorities in the northern regions of China. Both the headless monk and Xiong's instruments are Hu Qin. To figure out the identity of these bosses, we have to follow the crumbs in the narrative poem when approaching their hideout. When you hear the narrator, Look around and search for waterfalls. That's where they're hiding. The poem goes like this. By what decree must his head be hung for all to see? By what decree must the waters he governed roam free? By what decree must all matters not know how to be? By what decree must mercy's hand so woe upon thee? This poem, especially the first two sentences, is the key to unlock their lore in Journey to the West, because there's only one dragon who got beheaded in the novel, the Dragon King of Jing River. And the second line is referring to his sons, including two bosses we've just covered. In the Chinese version, Si means four, Du means large rivers that can flow into the sea, Shi means lost, Wan means governed, Bo Gu means because of what. So combining them together, we get a literal translation, because of what the four rivers lost governing. The phrase four rivers in ancient China refers specifically to the collection of Yangtze River, Yellow River, Huai River, and Ji River. In chapter 43 of the novel, the monkey king Wu Kong had a confrontation with the dragon king of Western Ocean. The dragon king confessed that the beheaded dragon was his in-law and had nine sons altogether before he died. We can see here the author of Journey to the West, Wu Cheng'en, paid respect to the folklore tradition by giving the beheaded dragon nine offspring. Their names and occupations are the first, Little Yellow Dragon, lives in the Huai River. The second, Little Black Dragon, lives in the Ji River. The third, Blue Backed Dragon, lives in the Yangtze River. The fourth, Red Whiskered Dragon, lives in the Yellow River. The fifth, Futile Dragon, strikes the bell for the Buddhist Patriarch. The sixth, Reclining Beast Dragon, guards the roof beam in the palace of the Taoist Patriarch. The seventh, Riverend Dragon, guards the imperial commemorative arches for the Jade Emperor. And the eighth, 
Sea Serpent Dragon remains at the place of my elder brother and guards the Taiyue Mountain of Shanxi Province. The ninth son is the Iguana Dragon. Because of his youth and lack of official appointment, he was told last year to live in the Black River to nourish his nature. Since the narrative poem tells us all four rivers lost governing, plus we've been given two who lives in those rivers, it is reasonable to assume that there are at least two more hidden dragons for us to find behind some kind of waterfall. Little Yellow Dragon and Blue Back Dragon. Personally, I would hope to see all nine of them in the game, especially the youngest, because he's the only one who has a storyline in the novel. Fun fact, the entire existence of Ji River was swallowed by the deviation of Yellow River in 1855, so technically, Black Long would be a homeless dragon in real life. That explains why he doesn't have any fancy things like his brother did in the trailer. Although the Ji River is no more, its influence is inherited throughout history. For example, the city Jinan got its current name at 164 BCE, which literally means the south of Ji River and has been the capital of Shandong province since 1376. With all that being said, the game leaves us with a question. What kind of force could possibly drove the mighty dragons away, especially Red Whisker? The other three are simply Zhan Liao the rivers, which means occupied or take possession of. But Red Whisker is Zhen Shou the rivers, which means guard in a military sense. That is an order from the heavenly palace, and absence without leave will definitely have serious consequences. Is he not afraid to end up like his beheaded father, or is he facing a much more imminent threat? Also a viewer left a comment from last video asking why we have to fight Long if they are auspicious sign in Chinese mythology. Are they not supposed to be on our side? The Headless Monk's song may provide an answer to that question. In the lyrics from Gamescom trailer, he sings, All the regrets for showing mercy, four children all turned evil. Showing mercy is most likely referring to the beheaded Dragon King. We can talk more about his story and how he ended up being sentenced to die in later episodes. For now, let's focus on the second line. It seems his sons have been corrupted by evil, or maybe they lost faith to the heavenly palace because of the punishment to their father. The plot thickens, but nothing we can say for sure yet. Now do take my words with a grain of salt, cause Chinese language is pretty hard to interpret without verbal context or written in black and white. Take the Monkey King's name for example. It's pronounced as Wukong, and there are 118 words that can sound exactly the same as Wu, and 22 for Kong. So with that in mind, it is nearly impossible to be certain about the lyrics without any context. Not to mention his regional dialect is adding another layer of complication due to its different pronunciations from Mandarin, the common tone. Maybe he's telling a totally different story, but I do believe my interpretations to the first two lines makes the most sense. What do you think that could happen to these dragons? Let me know in the comments section. When we stand in front of waterfall entrances, the narrator will also give us hints on how to fight them. For Black Long, the narrative poem says, By what decree must from streams into sands thou flee? Resonant waves profound, pulsing through the ground, Evade their might unbound, and victory is surely found. Resonant waves profound, pulsing through the ground, refers to Black Long's drumbeat shock waves. Evade their might unbound, and victory is surely found, reminds us the key to this boss fight is to dodge during shockwave phases. And for Red Whisker, I can't find its official translation at this point, but the gist of it would be within instant smoke brews thunder. When you see him releases smoke from those sensors, run away from melee range or thunder AOE will soon follow. I hope you enjoyed this video. In next episode, let's take a break from the creatures and address some very important questions, like system requirements of the game and how it performs, or the interface, control, and game mechanics. Stay tuned and bye for now.